Having all these flowers in the meadow provides a huge amount of nectar and pollen for all sorts of insects. The obvious ones are the butterflies, which you can see fluttering around us here. Meadow browns and some marble whites as well, which are a type of brown butterfly too, but they're, they're mainly white. Uh, as well as that, if you look closer, there's all sorts of other insects in here. So there's little flies, uh, bees, lots of different sorts of bee around, but they're quite elusive creatures. Uh, you tend to just see the bumblebees. There's a red-tailed bumblebee and a white-tailed bumblebees in here. Um, and all, but we get closer and you see all sorts of other things. So I'm just looking down here, there's a, a little swollen thigh beetle on a flower here. It's quite an amazing looking thing, metallic green beetle. With the, the males have these huge bulbous thighs. I don't know why they have these. Um, I'm not sure if anyone knows really, but uh, they're quite impressive looking and they're beautiful metallic creatures and they're very, very common in grasslands at this time of year. Pretty well any grassland you'll, you'll go to, you'll always see swollen thigh beetles. Well, this is a lovely thing to find. It's a greater butterfly orchid. A beautiful pale orchid, lovely pale green stem with these really off-white flowers. Fabulous thing to see. Now these orchids haven't got much of a scent at the moment, but if you come down at dusk, if you have a patch, if you know a patch of greater butterfly orchids, go down and smell them at dusk. They have a beautiful perfume they produce. And this is a tr to attract moths which pollinate them. Uh, things like elephant hawk moths uh, and other moths as well will come in and fly, feed on the flowers, and they will pick up little pollinia from the, the flowers. And these will stick to the moth's face and tongue. Uh, and these are carrying little packets of pollen and then when it goes to another butterfly orchid it will pollinate it. So quite a lot of, of orchids use insects to pollinate their flowers. Well, this dandelion family, this sort of composite flowers, these yellow dandelion things, quite hard to identify most of the time. There's, this one is cat's ear, one of the very common ones in the meadows. There's lots of other ones, hawk bits and hawk weeds, which to be honest, even real good botanists find it difficult to separate them. Uh, but they're really, really good for insects. So whether you've got a big meadow like this or a tiny little patch of ground, I've just got a small garden and, and I have little patches of cat's ear and it attracts so many bees. I've had two or three different species of bee in our garden this year. Uh, just from having a little patch of, of cat's ear and another little patch of nipple wort. Uh, these yellow flowers just brilliant, brilliant for bees. So although they're often the sort of things that adverts are telling you to get rid of and spray glyphosate all over and destroy the poor old dandelions and, and these cat's ears and things like this, I'd say just keep them all because they, they grow in cracks in the path along in meadows like this, they grow all over the place and they're absolutely brilliant for bees and other insects as well. Well you can hear this plant, uh, it's the yellow rattle and uh, this time of year you can hear the seed pods are just starting to form the seeds inside and it's rattling away. Yellow rattle is also known as the meadow maker. It's uh, semi-parasitic on grasses. Uh, it's an annual plant, so the uh, the seeds will these seeds from here will drop down into the soil, and then they'll germinate sort of late winter. They need a little bit of sun on them to germinate, and then they'll parasitize the grass. So they'll knock back some of the grasses and allow the other flowering plants to come up. So it's a really good plant to have in meadows. Uh, it's very good for diversifying the meadow. It's amazing when you're walking around meadows that they're not uniform, there aren't the same flowers growing in the same spots. You sometimes get these little patches, and I don't know why, but for some reason here there's a lot and lot of eye bright, absolute mass of these little pale pink flowers with little yellow centres to them. And these orchids would have once been very common around Dartmoor before a lot of these marshy fields were drained, but where you get these marshy fields remaining, they're absolutely abundant. They're really lovely orchids to see as well. They love the wetter bits of the, the fields uh, where they like to have their feet just in a bit of wet mud really uh, to really thrive. And as you can see, they grow really quite tall. 